Hey, Mrs. Bodichon here. So today we're going to be talking all about waves of vocabulary and key concepts. Now in this video, you're going to see a blue screen pop up and it's either going to have that vocabulary word or that key concept that you need to know. When you see those blue screens, go ahead and pause the video. See if you know it, think about it before you listen to me give you the answer or definition. Okay, so let's go ahead and try one out. So our first one is part of a transverse wave. So here's our blue screen, go ahead and pause it, and then you can wait for the answer in a second. So here's a transverse wave. We're always gonna start with our origin in the middle, or we can call this rest where there's no disturbance. And then you can see that our top point is gonna be our crest, our bottom point is gonna be our trough. We do have a wavelength going from crest to crest, and then we have our amplitude from rest to crest. We can also measure amplitude from rest to trough as well. Parts of a longitudinal wave. So here's what a longitudinal wave looks like. You're gonna see these parts of the wave that look like they're all pushed together and that's called a compression. You're gonna find the other parts of the wave where they're stretched apart and that is called a refraction. And then in order to measure wavelength on a longitudinal wave, we have to go from compression to the next compression. You could also measure it from rarefaction to the next rarefaction. So wavelength, how do we measure it? So you can do this in several different ways. The classic way is to go from crest to crest, but you can also use trough to trough, or you can do any point on the wave until it repeats again on that wave train. Frequency. So frequency is the number of waves in a given amount of time. If you look at these four waves, they all have different frequencies. So this one right here, this pink one, is gonna have a very low frequency. Now when things have a low frequency, they also have low energy and a longer wavelength. Um, if you look at this purple wave over here, this one is gonna have the highest frequency on this page, and that means that it has the highest energy and the shortest wavelengths. Transverse wave. So a transverse wave, the particles move perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So if our wave is moving forward, then what's gonna happen is our disturbance is to have to go in an up or down motion to create this right angle right here, uh, meaning perpendicular for a transverse wave. Longitudinal wave. So longitudinal waves, the particles move parallel to the direction of the wave. So in this case, we have the direction of the wave moving forward. We would have to have our disturbance moving in that same direction forward, forward and backwards, right? So think about like pushing a slinky, that would do it. Um, so this is gonna be in the same direction, therefore we call it parallel, and that makes it a longitudinal wave. Electromagnetic wave. So electromagnetic waves are gonna always be transverse waves. Um, they do not require a medium to travel, which means they can go in a vacuum like outer space. In fact, that's where they travel the very fastest, okay? They're gonna travel the very slowest um, where there's a lot of particles to slow them down and it's gonna have a lot to do with that scattering of the light. Um, but the more particles you have, the slower it goes. So it's definitely gonna go the slowest in a solid where there's particles are tightly packed together. Mechanical wave. So mechanical waves can be transverse or longitudinal, either one, and they do require a medium. So these must have particles to um, move and travel. What we mean by that is a solid, liquid, or gas, right? So they cannot be in a vacuum. So there's no sound in outer space, you guys, right? Um, they are gonna travel the slowest in a gas because those particles are very far apart and it takes time to travel to vibrate the next particle to travel to vibrate the next one, right? So um, in a solid where they are tightly packed and dense together, they can hit each other and vibrate super fast. Um, and so that's why it travels the very fastest in a solid. Electromagnetic spectrum. So here's the electromagnetic spectrum. So as we look at this wave, everything on this end is gonna have a very um, long wavelength. It's gonna have a very low frequency and low energy. 
Now it's completely the opposite on this end of the spectrum. Over here we have a short wavelength, which means it's gonna have high energy and high frequency, okay? This side is also the most dangerous to humans, while this side is the least dangerous to humans. So over here we start with radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light. And visible light's what humans can see. This is also our rainbow, so that Roy G. Biv, right? Um, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and then we end with gamma rays. Reflection. So reflection is the bouncing back of a ray of light, sound, or heat when the ray hits a surface it doesn't go through. So if we have a surface down here and our beam of light shines down, it will reflect in the opposite direction. And remember, the angle of, re of incidence equals the angle of reflection out. So they're gonna equal each other. Refraction. So refraction is when a wave changes direction and speed as it passes from one medium into another. So I'm showing you an example here. We have two mediums, air and glass, and a beam of light is going to go pretty fast through air, right? Because there's hardly any particles there. It's a gas. Um, and it's going to definitely slow down as it enters a solid, which is glass. Um, now when that occurs, we're gonna have a bend in the light and a slower speed. Um, now as it exits and it goes back into air, which is that gas, it is going to bend and speed up, okay? Defraction. So defraction is when a wave bends around an edge or spreads through an opening. So here we have a barrier and we have this gap or opening right in the middle of it. So when the wave approaches it, you can see that it's gonna have this bending effect, which we call diffracting. And this can also occur around a corner as well. Constructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when two waves come together and create a larger amplitude. Now when this happens, we have to have crests line up with crests and troughs line up with troughs in order to create that larger amplitude or that um, higher wave, right? Because this is really talking about wave height is the amplitude. Destructive interference. So destructive interference is the opposite of constructive interference, and that's when two waves come together to create a smaller amplitude or no amplitude at all, right? So if two waves come together, we have to have a crest overlapping a trough now. So it's going to reduce the amplitude, create a shorter wave or no wave at all, as you can see here, no disturbance. Doppler effect. So Doppler effect is a change in the frequency and wavelength of a wave as a source and observer moves. So right here we have an observer, an observer is just a person listening to a sound, okay? And then we have our source, and the source is what's actually creating the sound or the noise. Um, in this case, it's a train. So as the train is moving towards the observer, the person listening, those wavelengths are gonna be really short, which means it has a very high frequency, which means a high pitch. And that person is gonna hear a really loud pitch, which is a really squeaky sound, right? That high pitch is really, really squeaky noise. Um, but as soon as the source, that thing making the noise, in this case, the train, passes them by, those wavelengths are gonna extend and they're gonna become considerably longer, which means we're reducing that frequency and reducing that pitch. So now we have a very low pitch, which gives us a very deep sound when we hear the train pass, it will appear to be a very low, deep pitch, okay? I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank y'all so much. Hey, you guys, if this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see all the new Science Explained videos that are coming out. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye, you guys.